guys give up? Oh, yeah, thirsty for more. How many times have you seen Home Alone? Five times. Three times. A million times. I don't think so. Home Alone. Season's greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Player One Start. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time, Home Alone. Growing up in the early 1990s, it was almost an impossibility that you had not at least seen or heard of Home Alone. The film was written and produced by legendary filmmaker John Hughes, responsible for other classics such as Christmas Vacation, Sixteen Candles, Weird Science, The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, as well as others. The film stars Macaulay Culkin as Kevin McAllister, a boy who is mistakenly left behind when his family travels to Paris for their vacation. Kevin initially really likes the idea of being home alone, but soon have to contend with two burglars, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. What ensues is the greatest act of child violence towards adults that has ever reached the cinema screen. Although the film did well during its opening weekend, it unexpectedly stayed popular well past the Christmas season, being the number one film at the box office for 12 straight weeks, from its release in mid-November to the first weekend of February in 1991. By the time Home Alone ended its box office run, it was the third highest grossing film of all time worldwide, behind only Star Wars and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. So because Home Alone was very popular with kids, it was almost inevitable that they would make a home video game adaptation for it. However, if you look at the story of Home Alone, there's not really too much they could have done to make a game out of it and still be faithful to the movie. However, this first attempt, I think, tries the most. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the home adaptations I own of Home Alone. Okay, first, let's start with the version for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was released on October of 1991 in North America and was the first of the games to be released. In this version, the player must avoid being caught by Harry and Marv for 20 minutes. But I didn't make it that far in my first playthrough, and I was very quickly taken to an oh no screen. It shows you where everything is at in the house, and then the game just goes back to the title screen. During this time, Kevin can set various traps using items scattered around the house. Each trap has a different corresponding strength and knocks them unconscious for different amounts of time. Kevin can also hide behind certain parts of the house, but only for two consecutive turns. Any other concurrent passes will result in a game over. Some copies of the NES version have two different game over screens. One has Kevin McAllister performing his trademark screaming with face, or the other one just has a large screen that says oh no in the middle of it, and that appears to be the one I have. So overall this game is relatively simplistic, and once you get the hang of it it's not too hard. In fact, I found a way to just make a huge circle around the game, and eventually you'll win just because the timer will run out. There's not really any sort of replay value for me in this, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next game. Here we have the Super Nintendo version. This version was released two months after the NES version, in December of 1991. At least this time we are treated to a more faithful adaptation of the musical score from the movie. As the game begins, you're treated to this delightful music and kind of an okay cutscene. At least they got the original house in the background, although it is kind of badly photoshopped on the background there. A departure from the movie that they describe in this cutscene is that they have gotten a whole bunch of their friends, who appear to be 1930s style gangsters, to join them in robbing the house. Although later on you'll see that they seem to have no interest in trying to stop Kevin. Oh, and apparently Marv wants that kid's toys. More than the jewels, TVs, and VCRs. The 
The goal is to evade the wet bandits while bringing all of the McAllister's fortunes from the house down to the safe room, which is located in the basement. I will note that this is a departure from the movie because all Kevin was trying to do in the movie was just trying to trap them and distract them long enough for the police to get there. I don't think they were successful in ever stealing anything from the McAllister's house, and there was no large safe in the basement. But anyway, once you gather six items, you must deposit them down the laundry chute so that they'll make it in front of the safe room in the basement. You have to be careful though, because if you actually reveal one of the treasures or jewels in front of a thief, the thief will come and grab it and run away. You also have to be careful not to touch any of the thieves or else you'll lose some life. However, I was able to finish the entire first level with little to no difficulty. The controls in this game are fairly simple. You can run left or right, or jump, but you're also given a squirt gun, which I have yet to figure out the purpose for. So I just ended up ignoring it for my run through this game. I also don't like having to backtrack to the laundry chute every time I gather six items. The more you collect valuables in the first level, the more gameplay elements they introduce, such as this point in the game where I have to kneel on the bed to grab the bracelet, and then I have to jump on one of the open drawers to get to the top to grab the other bracelet. And then there's this part here where you're standing at the kitchen table. You can't jump onto the table as you normally would in any other part of the game. Instead, you have to stand next to the table and jump up and down till the bracelet slowly makes its way across the table, and then Kevin can catch it. Once you've dropped all the valuables down to the laundry room, a key will appear in front of the basement door. And then once you're in the basement, you have to avoid the rats and bats in order to make it to the safe. I also don't find too much replay value in this game, because once you know where the treasures are located, the game is fairly easy. Alright, let's move on to the Game Boy version. And funny enough, this version was released between the NES version and the Super NES version in November of 1991. And for the most part, it follows the same gameplay style of the Super NES version, only this game is toned down a lot to make it fit on the Game Boy. I do find it kind of surprising that this game does not follow the plot of the NES version, as it may have lent itself better to a port on the Game Boy, however I think they did an okay job at making this game a bit more portable. One downside to this game is that it appears that the only music that plays throughout this game is the title theme that they play on the title screen. So I hope you like it because if you play this game, you'll be listening to the same bars of that over and over and over again. Alright, the last version of this game that I own is for the Sega Genesis. This game was released in 1992 in both North America and on the Mega Drive in 1992 in Europe. And again, we are treated to some generic, cheesy 1990s music brought to you by the Genesis Sound Chip. Again, I'm not sure why they couldn't use the actual theme here, because the Genesis Sound Chip was definitely capable of reproducing that theme. But anyway, once you take a look at the options menu, you are free to start your game.
and to be quite honest, I actually didn't find this game as user-friendly as the others. I found it overly complicated, and I still couldn't really figure out how to play through it, even after attempting it a few times. However, once again, the game still does revolve around Kevin's battle with the Wet Bandits. Instead of protecting just his house, he must protect several houses in his neighborhood, while waiting around 20 minutes for the police to arrive, 40 on higher difficulties. During the game, the Wet Bandits drive around the neighborhood until they decide to enter one of the houses. Kevin travels by sled, in the top-down view, to various houses to do battle with the bandits as they proceed to rob whichever house they are in. This statement, by a game reviewer of the time, may sum up my thoughts on this game, saying that the game was a wasted film license and was grotesquely overpriced and a pathetically underdeveloped mockery of a game. This is the only game out of the ones that I own that I did not beat. Alright, so as you can see, there were some very different attempts made to make Home Alone into a video game, and a lot of them do seem like a fast cash grab. However, are any of these worth collecting today, in my opinion? Well, let me go ahead and put these in order of how they rank in my opinion, and maybe that will help you decide whether or not you should collect this game. At the bottom of my list is the Sega Genesis version. Right from the get-go with that cheesy 90s music showing that either they couldn't even bother to get a adaptation of the original theme onto the game cartridge, or that it was not worth the money that they would spend for it, I feel that this game is probably the least faithful to the movie. However, I've actually seen this game ranked higher on other people's reviews, either online or in magazines at the time. A lot of people ranked the Genesis version as really good and their favorite today. So I don't know if there's something I'm personally missing, I never got into it very well. So the Genesis version is definitely at the bottom of this list for me. Coming in at number three would be the NES version. Again, part of it has to do with the fact that I didn't really care for the music of this game, and the gameplay is very repetitive and not very fun. Again, I should point out that once you get the hang of the groove of making that circle around the entire house, the challenge of this game goes away very quickly, and once you beat it once, there is no incentive to play it again, and there's not really very much of a reward for beating this game. So we only have two versions left, the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo version. And I have to say, the Game Boy version probably comes in at number two for me. I don't think this is a bad port, and I actually do enjoy this game. And I think they did a very good job of porting the Super Nintendo version to the Game Boy. And I'm going to reiterate that I do find it a bit strange that they did not port the NES version to the Game Boy, but instead they opted to port the 16-bit version they made for the Super Nintendo to the Game Boy. All in all, I think that was a good choice because the gameplay is a little bit better. And yes, that ranks at number one, the Super Nintendo version. I enjoyed this version the most, even though, again, just like the NES game, it is a little short. I believe the game only has two levels, although it's been a while since I've beaten this game, I've actually gotten through it all the way. So I rank this solely on the gameplay being the most enjoyable, it actually having music from the movie, and if I would have gotten either one of these games, either for the Super Nintendo or the Game Boy as a Christmas gift in the early 1990s, I would have really enjoyed it. But anyway, that aside, I think the reason why I enjoy playing this game today is mostly due to the nostalgia I have for the movie. I will say that if you're not a fan of the movie, there's going to be no draw for you collecting this game. But anyway, that's just my opinion. What did you guys think? If you guys agree or disagree with my opinions of these games, let me know down in the comments below. I'd really like to see your guys' thoughts on it. Well, that said, that actually ends this video. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I want you all to have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned next week as I'll have another video coming out. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Merry Christmas, everybody! You know, I'm singing like they do in the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Maybe I should have tried to do something for Home Alone. Hmm. Wait a minute. I am Home Alone. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see some of the content I've already done, feel free to click on some of the suggestions that are popping up on your screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.